of becoming very seriously ill indeed if they contract, contract that virus. So there, there is much for them to worry about, but many of them already know all the steps that they need to take in normal course to protect themselves because of the condition that they suffer from. What we need to make sure of, and what I try to outline, and again, very happy uh, in the coming days to set out more detail for members uh, through a letter or whatever means we might find, uh, what they really need is to know that the additional support that they need, uh, where that cannot be provided by family or friends, uh, and again, there that needs to be very carefully done, about how that contact is made. That additional support is support that with our local authorities, through the Resilience Partnerships and with an army of volunteers, in fairness, uh, we will make sure is provided uh, as much as we possibly can. David Stewart to be followed by Sandra White. <coughs> uh, thank you, President Officer. My question is for the Cabinet Secretary for Health. In previous statements, the First Minister rightly referred to the crucial role of ventilators in ICUs under critical shortage worldwide. Does the Cabinet Secretary welcome the breaking news of the development of rapidly manufactured ventilation systems, which are lightweight, robust, and require no more than 30 minutes training for a hard-working medical staff to use? First Minister. So Mr Stewart is absolutely right, and he and I have talked more than once about the situation of ventilators, indeed only this morning at committee. Uh, so, so any innovation that comes forward that is robust, that we know is evidence and exists is something to be welcomed and that indeed is why uh, my colleague Mr McKee has his uh, very focused group looking at the whole manufacturing those innovations, testing that out with a degree of expertise and skill in order to advise me as the health secretary whether this is a genuine opportunity for us to very actively pursue. So that cross-government look at how we acquire the equipment that we need uh, to address this particular challenge is a really important one and one that I very much welcome. This is a BBC News special. We're bringing you live coverage of proceedings from the Scottish Parliament this afternoon. You just heard there from the Health Secretary, Jean Freeman. We'll return in just a second. Let's get a summary of what we've heard so far. The First Minister confirming 584 positive cases of COVID-19 in Scotland. That's up from 499 on Monday, an increase of 85. She does emphasize, so that is very much an underestimate. And a further two deaths bringing to a total of 16. Let's cross to our Chief Political Correspondent, Glenn Campbell. Uh, a lot of announcements this afternoon, but in particular the First Minister addressing the issue of businesses and employment. That's right, she had confirmed that the Scottish Government scheme to give small businesses rates relief and to make grants available is now up and running and I've posted on my Twitter feed a link to the part of the government website where you can find more details of that. She also sought to give some additional advice to employers on who should and should not be turning up for their work. She said that they should operate on a precautionary principle. In other words, if people can do their work from home, then they should do their work from home. And she asked employers to think carefully about the nature of the work that they do and to ask themselves if they are involved directly in the fight against coronavirus. In those circumstances, their work would be essential and uh, people would obviously need to stay involved. And um, she also said that that would apply uh, to certain businesses providing other essential services like food but basically to apply a precautionary principle where if somebody doesn't need to be in the office or the factory or the place of work, then they should stay at home. She also gave some additional advice on construction sites because there had been some conflict between the advice coming from the UK and Scottish governments on that. She said that construction sites should close with the exception of those that are involved in hospital building. She said the government would review this area of construction and if it could be persuaded that work of that sort could continue on a, a, a safe basis then that advice may be revised in time but for the moment construction sites she said should close. There were also a wide range of questions not least on uh, the 
the business of police enforcement and the Justice Secretary Hamza Youssef confirmed that there are some existing powers available to the police in Scotland, for instance, to apply for a court order to quarantine somebody who has an infectious disease. And given that the Scottish Government has notified coronavirus as an infection, uh, infectious disease, then those powers could apply to this particular crisis. But Police Scotland will have more extensive powers probably later this week when emergency legislation is passed in the UK Parliament. That legislation is going to be scrutinised here at Holyrood later this afternoon and MSPs are expected to give their consent. So at the moment the questions to the First Minister and her Cabinet team continue and after that from about three o'clock there'll be a further statement on justice perhaps with more detail on arrangements for policing the coronavirus crisis. And Glenn, just before we return to the Chamber, some important announcements also from the Health Secretary, Jean Freeman. Yes, uh, the Health Secretary's played a, a prominent role in the question and answer session this afternoon and perhaps one of the more eye-catching announcements from her that from Monday the 30th of March, parking charges at...